I told you not to go for those blade battery cars, but you just had to get one. Now, take a look at this BYD car here. The battery pack's gone. This blade battery from BYD has really put the owner in a tight spot. Let's open up the battery pack and have a look-see. You see this? It's the blade battery from the BYD Han, and water got into the battery pack. The insulation resistance is practically zero now. Can't use it anymore. If it were a regular battery pack that got water inside, you just take out the battery module, let it sunbathe for a bit, pop it back in, and it's all good. But this is BYD's blade battery we're talking about. It's a pain to take apart. We can't even find a spot to pry it open with our crowbar. Anyway, owning a BYD means you're not exactly short on cash, right? Zhang, give the owner a ring. Tell them the battery pack's a goner and needs replacing. Quote them 100k. In the video, the man featured is the owner of a repair shop. Addressing problems of the highly acclaimed BYD blade battery, this professional shares his views based on what he sees. Many believe that the blade battery represents a new battery technology, but at its core it remains a lithium iron phosphate battery. The innovation lies in changing the traditional cylindrical shape of the individual cells into a thin blade-like shape, hence the name blade battery. The blade battery is part of a cell-to-pack CTP solution, with its battery pack consisting of individual cells connected and fixed in place with a special adhesive. This adhesive not only firmly secures the cells within the pack, but also provides thermal conduction, flame resistance, and a buffering effect. However, this also means that once the cells are glued together, disassembling them becomes quite challenging. This implies that repairing a damaged or impacted cell later on is difficult. Therefore, efforts to improve cell consistency and reduce the failure rate of individual cells is key in order to minimize the need for battery pack repairs. Therefore, blade battery repairs are significantly more costly, unlike traditional module battery packs that allow for individual module replacement. As two titans in the electric vehicle sector, Tesla and BYD have embarked on distinctly different paths in battery technology. Investigations into both companies' vehicles have led to a conclusion. One embodies genuine technical expertise, while the other is seen as a mere braggart. The gap between them is vast, with no basis for comparison. The quality of an electric vehicle fundamentally relies on its electric drive, control, battery, and chassis, key areas of core technology, with a battery's importance being self-evident. In terms of electric control technology, Tesla has developed its proprietary battery management system. Initially, Tesla's batteries were composed of over 7,000 Panasonic 18650 small cells assembled through series and parallel connections with each cell monitored individually. Tesla's in-house BMS system has remained unparalleled for years. In 2020, with increasing market competition and the aim to reduce battery costs, Tesla announced the development of its own 4680 large cylindrical battery. This ternary lithium battery, based on the Panasonic 21700 battery, has an energy density nearly five times that of the Panasonic, boosts range by about 16%, and can charge from 20 to 80% in just 15 minutes. However, whether it's BYD's lithium iron phosphate blade battery or Tesla's ternary lithium battery, both are liquid lithium-ion battery technologies with significant limitations in key metrics such as energy density, range, safety, battery life, and charging speed. Technologically, it appears challenging to achieve new breakthroughs. In addition to concerns about battery life in cold temperatures, lithium-ion batteries also pose a risk of catching fire or exploding under high temperatures or physical impact. The industry has been working for years to overcome these challenges with batteries, as solving these issues is crucial for electric vehicles to become a reliable and safe mode of transportation in the future. The development of solid-state batteries is seen as the best solution for these problems. Therefore, there is a saying in the industry that lithium batteries will dominate the first half of the race in battery development, while solid-state batteries are expected to take the lead in the second half. Let's turn our attention to related news. The company from Taiwan, Prologium Technology, has been quietly developing solid-state batteries for 17 years, 
and announced at the end of January that the world's first production line for these batteries had been launched, and the batteries would soon be distributed to car manufacturers for testing. According to Prologium's early statements, their solid-state batteries can charge up to 80% in just 12 minutes, offering a range of up to 1,000 kilometers, are fundamentally safe with no risk of explosion, and do not lose charge in harsh weather conditions. This news comes from Taiwanese media. On January 23rd, Taiwan's Central News Agency reported that Prologium Technology, a major solid-state battery manufacturer, announced the opening of the world's first gigascale solid-state lithium ceramic battery superfactory in Taoyuan. The factory will begin mass production and start shipping to global automotive customers this year, with a capacity sufficient to supply up to 26,000 electric vehicles. The founder and CEO of Prologium Technology stated that the opening of this factory marks a new chapter in the industry. It demonstrates to the world that mass production of next-generation solid-state batteries has been achieved ahead of schedule, ushering a new era. Prologium plans to start shipping from its Taiyun factory to global automotive customers starting this year. The company began manufacturing large-capacity solid-state batteries for electric vehicles at the Taiyun factory at the end of 2023 and displayed a 106 amp-hour high silicone anode solid-state battery produced by the new factory at the opening event. Initially, the Taiyun factory will start with a 0.5 gigawatt capacity, which will be expanded to a full capacity of 2 gigawatts, depending on market demand. As production scales up, Prologium will create up to 1,200 job opportunities in the Guayin area. In May last year, Prologium announced a 5.2 billion euro investment in a 48 gigawatt super factory in Dunkirk, France. The project is proceeding smoothly with mass production expected in 2027. Prologium hopes to become the world's largest solid state battery manufacturer by the 2030s, capturing 35% to 40% of the market share. Prologium has developed large lithium ceramic batteries, LLCB, that utilize the high thermal conductivity of ceramic electrolytes to increase the volumetric density of solid state batteries through a compact cooling system. Compared to mainstream 2170 battery electric vehicles, LLCB battery packs can nearly double the volume energy density, reducing the weight by 115 kilograms under the same total energy. This means that electric vehicles like the Tesla Model Y if equipped with these batteries, could see their range increase to 1,000 kilometers, with the ability to charge up to 80% in just 12 minutes. Additionally, these batteries have passed puncture tests, are safe and non-explosive, perform well at negative 30 degrees Celsius, and have a cycle life of over 1,000 times, making them superior to almost all batteries currently on the market. Prologium's announcement of mass production of solid-state batteries took everyone by surprise, with many mainland Chinese even considering it fake news. Prologium, founded in 2006 and inventor of the world's first lithium ceramic battery, holds nearly 500 solid-state battery patents and is at the forefront of solid-state battery technology, despite being relatively unknown in the solid-state battery market and having not previously released any information on solid-state battery development. Japan's Toyota, a leader in the solid-state battery development race, announced a significant technological breakthrough in June last year, developing a solid-state battery that can be charged in 10 minutes and has a range of 1,200 kilometers. Panasonic has also displayed a solid-state battery prototype and claims it can mass-produce sulfide solid-state cells by 2025. Samsung SDI of South Korea released a sulfide solid-state battery in March 2020 with good performance. Last year, Samsung SDI completed the construction of a factory for 46 mm diameter cylindrical batteries targeting Tesla as its primary customer. This has raised hopes in the industry for accelerating mass production. In Europe and America, numerous companies are developing solid-state battery technologies, in Europe, traditional automakers lead the development in collaboration with institutions and companies, 
such as BMW and Volkswagen Group, which have joined the field through investments. In the United States, research institutions like QuantumScape, Solid Power, Simbit, PolyPlus, 24M, SACT3, and others are actively involved, each with its own expertise and significant patent portfolios, demonstrating strong research capabilities. China, not wanting to fall behind in the race for the future of battery dominance, has several companies, including lithium battery giants like CATL and BYD, involved in solid-state battery research and development. Reports occasionally claim that solid-state batteries have been developed and are close to mass production. However, aside from CATL's press conference in April 2023, which presented a unique quasi-solid-state battery, no substantial outcomes have been released. In the era of lithium-ion batteries, China has occupied half the global battery industry, building the world's most complete and largest power battery industry system. Approximately 50,000 companies have joined the new wave of the lithium battery industry, making it the largest battery supplier globally, leading the market for six consecutive years. However, maintaining its leading position in the new battle for battery supremacy will not be easy for China. Taiwan's early move in the development and mass production of solid-state batteries, along with the precarious position of existing lithium battery suppliers, poses significant challenges. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, BNEF, in its Global Lithium-Ion Battery Supply Chain Ranking, released on February 5th, Canada has surpassed China to become the country with the most potential to establish a safe, reliable, and sustainable lithium-ion battery supply chain in 2023. BNEF, a research institution focused on low-carbon technologies and the commodities market, found that Canada's advantages in the competition stem from its raw material resources, strong integration with the U.S. automotive industry, and clear policy commitments. The rankings by BNEF assess 30 countries based on 46 individual indicators across five equally weighted categories raw materials, battery manufacturing, downstream demand, environmental, social, and governance ESG factors, and industry, infrastructure, and innovation. Each category was ranked individually, culminating in an overall ranking. Canada topped the overall rankings, marking the first time China has lost its position as a leader in the global lithium battery supply chain. According to a statement released by BNEF, Canada's continuous improvements in manufacturing and production, along with strong ESG capabilities, have positioned it as a leader in shaping the future battery supply chain. Its close integration with the U.S. automotive industry means Canada is also a major beneficiary of the French Shoring Initiative in the U.S. Inflation Reduction Act. Furthermore, Canada's ranking benefits from policy commitments at the provincial and federal levels aimed at attracting battery manufacturers and related suppliers. BNEF highlighted recent investments in Canada by major multinational corporations such as Ford, Stellantis, Volkswagen, LG Energy Solutions, and Umicore. BNEF noted that while China still has the strongest established supply chain, the increasing importance of sustainability across the life cycle of lithium-ion batteries means the region must take a more proactive approach to tackle ESG issues to benefit its supply chain in the long term. The research institution also found that China's credibility in ESG remains weak, while Canada is generally stronger. Overall, North America's supply chain has performed well due to strong policy commitments and implementation, with Canada and the United States occupying two of the top three spots, Mexico was the only country to make the progress in all categories assessed by BNEF, moving up nine places to 19. BNEF stated that the most significant progress over the past year has been in South Asia and Southeast Asia, with India and Indonesia leading a supply chain growth. Momentum in the region is expected to continue as projects announced earlier begin production this year, leading to a reshaping of the global supply chain. All African countries in the ranking, South Africa, Morocco, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, 
have also improved their upstream operations in collaboration with global partners. Experts believe that a key issue in China losing its global leadership in the lithium battery supply chain is a perceived security threat posed by Chinese-made batteries. Su Zhu Yun, director of the Strategic and Resources Institute at Taiwan's National Defense Security Research Institute, stated that China's gradual decline from the global lithium battery supply chain rankings is primarily due to concerns over corporate social responsibility, environmental responsibility, and national security. He said, these batteries use a battery management system, BMS, that needs to connect to the internet, making it akin to batteries being connected to Huawei, potentially leaking users' critical and sensitive information at any time, so the CCP has shot itself in the foot again. The significant growth of batteries from Canada or other countries is influenced by U.S. policies, such as the Clean Competition Act and the National Defense Authorization Act, which restrict or even prohibit the use of Chinese-made battery products beyond a certain proportion or offer subsidies for not using Chinese batteries. Thus, U.S. automakers are reconsidering their collaboration plans or factory plans with Chinese partners. Experts believe that Western countries are increasingly aiming to control strategic materials like batteries. While many countries are reclaiming raw material extraction and sourcing, refining, formulation, and production process technologies are also being transferred. European and American companies, particularly in refining, possess strong technologies, but China remains strong in large-scale mass production. Addressing these issues will be challenging in the short term. According to the National Defense Authorization Act passed on December 22 last year, the U.S. Department of Defense will prohibit purchasing batteries from six Chinese companies, including CATL, BYD, Envision Energy, EVE Energy, Goshen High Tech, and Hithium, starting from October 2027. Since January this year, the U.S. has seen a succession of calls for and policy supporting the development of a domestic battery industry. On January 18th, the U.S. Department of Energy announced it would allocate more than $131 million to advance the research and development of electric vehicle batteries and charging systems, aiming to reduce dependency on other countries in key battery component manufacturing areas. Su Ziyun commented that U.S. actions would lead to a decrease in the market share of Chinese cars or power batteries, mainly because the Chinese government uses many products as intelligence tools, resulting in a loss of international credibility. He said, The U.S. wants to reduce purchase of BYD's automotive batteries, partly due to high concerns about information security with electric vehicles. Western media have pointed out that Chinese electric vehicles collect images, driving locations, and conversations inside the car. In general, the threat to information security is higher than that of smartphones, so the U.S. Congress might take preemptive action by introducing relevant restrictions. Military power batteries, such as those stored at U.S. military corp spaces, have been found to be Chinese-made, and decisions have been made to dismantle them. In this context, the global market share of BYD or Chinese batteries will decrease. Europe also shares similar reports and views. It is now necessary to pay attention to whether the battery supply chain for electric vehicles will be affected, as well as the impact on the energy storage industry. For example, Tesla's PowerWare is essentially a solar power generation system combined with a lithium battery storage system. However, experts believe that while the U.S. and Europe are planning to counter China's leading advantage in batteries, completely replacing China's advantages in scale will take time.